to talk about something that's really interesting and intriguing from a cultural perspective, and that is the Puerto Rican versus Mexico rivalry, how intense it's been throughout the years, and how the developing star of Subrio Matias and his relationship to the Mexican community is, is sort of changing that dynamic, at least for the time being. You know, I'm sure at some point we'll get back at it. But I can tell you as growing up Puerto Rican in New York and always rooting for my fighters and rooting against Mexican fighters, right? I'm totally honest. No, um, you know, I wouldn't keep the truth from you. That's what it is. Um, I also appreciated many fighters. I think I have Chavez in my top five and um, David Benavidez, who's half Mexican, but, you know, whatever. He's one of my not only one of my top three current fighters, my top three current fighters being Crawford, Matias, and Benavidez in any particular order. Those those guys are just phenomenal. But Benavidez, I have in my in my top ten all time, um, top ten all time, and I have Chavez, like I said, in my top ten all time as well. And um, I really appreciated um, Morales and and um, Barrera, especially when Barrera did that um to what's a kid um not Hasim Nasim Hamed I forget his name but he was just such a pain in the ass and when Barrera grabbed him by his head and threw his threw his head on the turnbuckle I mean I couldn't tell I was celebrating as if it was a, a Puerto Rican fighter that was fighting but bringing it back to Matias right there's always been this this rivalry between Mexico and, and Puerto Rico and Myself having um, working in a working as a project manager in a construction company, and having a, a lot of um, Mexicans guys that I work with, you know we always joke around and, but we're conscious of the of the com competitive nature between both cultures. The thing is that I've always felt that it's things like that can be toxic, right? When you let it go beyond the sport. Because tribalism, right? It's like, okay, so I'm this, so this is better than that. But at the end of the day, if you look at it, right? Like if you have, um, let's say, America and Mexico, and you have a line between it. I'm American, you're Mexican. But in reality, those lines are just arbitrary, man-made imaginary lines that don't mean anything. We just do this so that we can have a way to separate one another, to say somehow I'm better than you. Um, that's the way I see it. You know, I always think like if, if God came down, and, oh, well, Mexico and, and Canada, whatever, he'd probably say, what are you talking about? This is all just one mass of land. You guys came up with those definitions, not me. You know, but anyway, I digress. The point is that Matias, right? Um, whenever like a Mexican fighter would be coming up or Puerto Rican, the opposite, um, culture right um fan base would kind of root you can feel it you know when edgar berlanga was coming up i could feel like but i wasn't the biggest edgar berlanga fan when he was coming up because i i don't want to say fraudulent but i was i didn't think that he was all that he was cracked up to be and i think that's that's been proving itself to be true um i've never been one of those guys for example i was pissed off when danny garcia fought the Mexican kid, I forget his name, Herrera, I think it was, in Puerto Rico. And the kid beat Danny Garcia and they gifted him, they they gifted Garcia the decision. And that pissed me off because I just didn't think it was right. I thought it was, you know, you got to call a spade a spade. If he lost, he lost. And he definitely lost to that kid, Herrera, and they gifted Danny Garcia the, the decision. And again, the fact that I was that I was Puerto Rican, watching a Puerto Rican guy win, didn't have any bearing on it. My thing was, who won the fight? So, hopefully that'll give you a, a an idea that even though I look at it, of course, from a, from a fanatical perspective, I don't allow that to trump my ability to be logical and to look at something impartially. So anyway, going back to, to Subriel, the fact that Subrio is being trained by Panda, right? Panda's a Mexican trainer, and he's a Mexican guy, and they have a like a wonderful relationship. Um, Subrio even makes it so that 
Panda's dad, who always who was a um a boxer when he was younger, but who also wanted to be a singer, has a phenomenal voice. And he walks Subriel out in Subriel's um last two fights. He's walked him out singing a Mexican song, a really popular Mexican song. It's a beautiful song. I don't know it, right? But his voice like brings it brings the song to life. And the fact that, you know, Subriel allows his dad to bring him out with that song it's a it's sort of a heartwarming thing in terms of looking at the the divisiveness between both cultures and the difference that that makes and um a lot of mexican mexican fans have gravitated to to Subriel, but not just because of that because of his style right because it's it's a mexican style that that style if you look at puerto rican or if you look at um african-american fighters the the mentality is always or very often hit and not get hit hit and stay away from the fire stay away from the fire and although i love my puerto rican boxers like there's nothing like watching a guy who gets in there and wants to get in that ass because you know there's there's no in the end there's no questions you know that your guy wanted to fight you know so super L has that style and it's just like it's it's watching it. It's like it's like a drug. You can't get enough of it. Like once a super old Matias fight is over, you're just like, when is the next one coming? And because the next one is not coming for another couple months, you go on YouTube and rewatch that one and the ones that you know you've seen before. And also shame on YouTube because now you can't watch the fights right after like you could before. You have to wait for someone to post it, and then it gets taken down. And you know it's a real um it's a real pain in the ass. But nonetheless, you know, I think it's an interesting dynamic between both. Um, obviously, Mexico is a country, Puerto Rico is an island, but there's an interesting dynamic there that is being um, somewhat, if not consolidated, but I guess somewhat mended in terms of, you know, um, the sport of, of pugilism. And, um, you know, it's interesting to see. It's interesting to see because there's certain... You know, it's almost like, you know, I know this is a different analogy, probably not the best one, but it's almost like um, Russia and Ukraine rooting for something together, you know? And um, that's what it seems like now. It'll be interesting to see when Super Yo fights a Mexican boxer, what will happen, because there's a lot of Mexican fighters that I think have a chance against Super Yo. Well, not a lot. There's a couple. There's um, Ramirez, right? The one who lost to Josh, I forget his first name, Jose Ramirez, I think. The one who lost to Josh Taylor. That dude's a beast, all right? He's he's a problem for anybody. And then you have Barbosa. I think Matias will knock out Barbosa because I don't think Barbosa possesses the the power to to keep um, Matias at bay. And I also think Matias will eventually knock out Ramirez too. But I give Ramirez a better shot. And um, it'll be interesting to see where the Mexican fan base pose. I would imagine that they would pull for the Mexican fighter. But still, being that they've developed this this fondness for Matias, it'll still be interesting. And um, yeah, it's, it's it's just I thought it was an interesting thing to touch on. And um, like I said, I think it's uh, interesting to see how one fighter sometimes all it takes is one person to sort of say like, look, we don't we can have our differences, but respectfully, and it doesn't have to be to the point where you know you you hate one another. You can compete and also be be cordial at the same time.